work with a lot of people from around the world. Digital marketing is a global endeavor. And yet, English is still the key language that you need to master if you're going to get your product out there to the masses. So, if you are a business leader or you are a copywriter or a digital marketing professional, you can improve your English skills. There are a few dead giveaways that English is not your native language. I'm gonna run through what those are and the key things that you can improve to sound better. If you wanna grow in your marketing and copywriting skills, subscribe to my channel. I drop great content all of the time that's gonna gradually train you on how to improve your copywriting skills and your ability to communicate. I'm Joy Yule from Hire a Writer. I help people like you write better websites, write better blogs, write better emails, and write better ads. Copy is a commodity and it is a huge asset if you're going to succeed in the digital marketplace. So let's walk through this in terms of the problems I see and the solutions you can apply. The first problem that a lot of people who don't speak English as their native language have is writing in a way that is too formal. So Americans and native English speakers are notorious for being very casual and using very conversational language. The fix for having too formal of an approach is to learn how to be more concise and more conversational. This often means bending the rules of grammar and it's kind of thick that I'm the one who's saying that because I am a writing professional, but you sometimes have to think outside the box. You have to say things in a way that other people would speak them and not just write in a way that makes sense to you intellectually. Oftentimes, people who don't speak English as a native language have learned it in an academic context, and so most of your writing is informed by academic best practice, which is great if you're writing a school paper, but if you're writing an online marketing course, if you're writing digital marketing posts, you need to write in a way that is more conversational. So practice listening to how people talk and then writing exactly what they say. That's not gonna be your finished product, but it's gonna be a much better starting point. The second major problem I see for people who don't write with, from English as their native language is wordiness. You can overcompensate if you are trying to use too many words. It's very obvious that you're trying too hard. So it is a lot harder to write few words than it is to write a lot of words. If you have a lot of words, you have a lot of opportunities to say the same thing a few different ways, right? Because your goal is to be understood. And the problem is if you don't speak English as your native language, a lot of times you are trying too hard to be understood and you're not sure that you're being understood. So you'll say things too many times in too many ways. Get ruthless about editing your content. Have somebody else edit your content. Make sure you don't ever say the same thing twice, right? Say it one time the best way. Editing is the way you get around this wordiness problem. A third problem I see with copywriters who don't speak English as their native language is using words the wrong way. And it's not overt, it's subtle. And English speakers do it too. But you tend to do it because if you don't have the, if you didn't grow up speaking English, there are certain things that you just miss. There are certain things that are not ingrained in you. And then there are also certain just grammatical errors that result of you not being an expert in the language. So I'm gonna go through what some of those are. Common mistakes are slight misuses of vocabulary words. So the things like count and uncount nouns. So for instance, if you say, let me give you advices instead of let me give you advice. So you're using a plural version the wrong way. Things like affect and effect, right? I get it, English sucks, it's really annoying, and there aren't a lot of reasons to why we have the structures we do, but you still have to learn them. Lay down versus lie down. So this is versions of verbs, and we'll get to verbs a little more in a second. They're very frustrating. There, 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 right? So these are three different versions. They sound exactly the same, but they obviously mean very different things. Mixing up that and which. Sometimes this is a formality thing as well. When you grow up speaking a language, these kind of nuances are ingrained in you. So you have the learning curve of having to understand these nuances. And I will say the solution is read, read more. And don't read like news and web copy, read literature, read books that have been written by master English speakers. These are the things that are just gonna ingrain in you the cadences and the norms and the best practices of language. A fourth problem that a lot of people have with English writing is active versus passive voice. A lot of times this is a, comp a compensatory thing too. So just like you overcompensate with being too wordy, you overcompensate by thinking that passive voice sounds more formal. So if it, for instance, if you say, my team was eaten by dinosaurs, 
that seems to feel more formal to a lot of people who don't speak English as their native language than saying, a dinosaur ate my team. Like it sounds oversimplistic to say it the latter way, but active voice is actually preferred. And in web copy, active voice is actually a part of your SEO score as well. The next problem is a little bit more nuanced and it is actual verb tenses. So you can get really caught up and it sounds very juvenile and inexperienced when you use verb tenses the wrong way. So let me give you a few examples. If we look at the word take, you can say will take, taken, took, takes, take. Will took isn't an option. Is taken is sometimes an option, but it's not a strong way to say something. Could takes isn't an option. She take is wrong. So see the problem? So what you need to do is you cross check as you write. You need to keep track of what the subject is and use the right version, be it individual or singular or group or plural, right? So you have your singulars and plurals that need to match the verbs and your verb will change based on what the subject of the sentence is. I get that that's challenging and this is probably the most academic one of this whole list that I have for you guys. You really need to get the grammar right. The last issue that I commonly see is about pronouns. And this is not, again, none of these issues are just for people who don't speak English as their first language, but they are more common with you guys. So we need to get these down. Pronoun usage is a challenge, and here are some examples of what I'm talking about. For instance, if you say Google's stock plummeted, you're not gonna follow it with a they. So you're not gonna say Google stock plummeted, they are freaking out, because Google is not a person or people, even though it feels like it. <laughs> So we're gonna say, if you say Google stock plummeted, you're gonna say it, right? Because Google is the subject of that sentence. So the way you get through pronoun misuses is to track the subject and object to make sure that are you talking about a person, are you talking about a corporation, and that you're matching the pronoun that you use to the subject or object of the sentence. Bottom line, if you want to become an excellent English digital marketing copywriter, you need to learn how to write like people speak. You need to learn how to write in a way that makes people think and read your copy in their own voice. Does that make sense? So there's the best copywriting in the world makes somebody forget that they're reading. They think that they're just thinking. It's a really, really powerful dynamic. And if you get good enough at it, it will be so familiar that you can do it quickly and you can make money doing it. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, I promise you, you will benefit because you will get ideas for how to write SEO blogs. You'll get ideas for how to refine your copywriting skills and grow in this. You can also reach out to hire a writer and we will help you. We have programs that bring on copywriters and help them learn and grow in their skills and abilities. One key source of digital marketing copy is social posts. So if your social post game is poor or you are starting to feel like you write the same things all the time, Watch this video. It's gonna give you six different styles of social media posts that will help you attract and convert new leads.